Hello there everyone, today's video is all about CIS. What does CIS stand for? Well, it means Construction Industry Scheme and it's a part of the tax code in the UK, uh, has its own set of rules. It's been in existence for about 50 years, introduced in 1972 and it's to basically it was brought in to improve the tax compliance for those that are in the building and construction game. So builders, um, on building sites, on construction projects, and all the people in the chain. So the joiners, the plasterers, the electricians, all the people in the supply chain on a building project, HMRC said, look, a lot of these guys, we don't think they're going to get their paperwork right. They're not going to be paying the right amount of tax. Basically, they've, they've said they don't trust, generally speaking, a lot of people in the building game to get their taxes right. Hence the introduction of the CIS. So what does it mean? Well, basically it's a way of safeguarding the revenue for HMRC, for the Treasury's coffers to make sure that there is no tax leakage because of this perceived lack uh, of awareness by certain people in the construction game. Let's take an example, subcontractor or subbies. They invoice into a main contractor. Now, HMRC think that thousands and thousands of subcontractors will not be able to get their taxes right and pay too little tax. So to safeguard against that, what the CIS aims to do is to say, right, on this invoice from the subby to the main contractor, when the, subcon when the contractor pays the invoice to the subcontractor, the contractor withholds an amount of tax. So um, let's say it's 20% for argument's sake and the subcontractor is a basic rate taxpayer. Well, he should pay 20% tax at the end of the year in any case. But to make things easier, um, the contractor withholds that tax on the payment to the subby and the contractor pays it over to HMRC. At the end of the, the year, this guy does a tax return. It could be a limited company, doesn't matter. Individual or limited company does a tax return, puts in the gross amount of the, his invoice and then knocks an amount off for the tax that was withheld by the contractor. A little bit like pays you earn. So the contractor is collecting the tax on behalf of the subcontractor. Now, in terms of does this happen to all subcontractors? No, it doesn't. If the subcontractor has been in business for long enough and is of a certain size and can prove that they are um, competent enough with their taxes, then HMRC will grant them gross payment status. So once they have this gross payment status agreed by HMRC, that means that the contractor does not have to withhold any tax to pay over to the taxman and he can pay the subcontractor gross and then the subcontractor reckons up with the taxman at the end of the year via self-assessment or corporation tax return. That's if they have gross payment status. If they uh, don't have gross payment status and they are not registered under the CIS, because normally these guys have to get registered, if they're not registered, automatically the contractor withholds 30% from the invoice. So on a 10 grand invoice from subby to contractor, contractor would knock off three grand, pay this guy seven and three grand goes off to HMRC. Now, of course, if this guy is still a basic rate taxpayer, he's suffered too much tax. He's got seven grand in his hand. This guy's taken off three grand, but really should have only taken off two grand. But the fact that he hasn't registered for CIS, that's his fault. At the end of the year, it'll all come out in the wash when he does a tax return and he says, look, Assuming that one invoice, £10,000, tax would have been 2000 but it would have suffered 3000 then there'll be a £1,000 refund. Now, that's assuming that's just a single invoice for the year, but it all gets tallied on with the rest of his invoices um, throughout the rest of the year. Now, when the guy becomes CIS registered, then, and he doesn't have gross payment status, then this guy, the contractor, withholds 20%. So... Not large enough to warrant to be paid gross, but he is registered under CIS, then deduct 20%. And then at the end of the year, he's all square because he would have paid 20% in any case. 
Um, but there are penalties for this guy in particular for not checking the status of all these subbies. Particularly if the contractor has multiple subbies, there could be several of these uh, reporting into the contract, billing the invoicing the contractor for work that's been farmed out to these guys. And if the contractor gets it wrong, and when I say gets it wrong, I mean doesn't correctly verify the status of these guys, then HMRC could come back on the contractor, even though it's this guy here that should be paying the tax. So what I mean by that is, let's say the contractor paid this subcontractor £10,000 gross, but the subby did not have gross payment status, so he shouldn't have paid him ten grand gross. He should have um, paid him seven or eight, depending on whether or not he'd registered already with the CIS. And then assuming that um, this guy doesn't then pay his tax at the end of the year, HMRC will come after this guy, not necessarily this guy. So if you're a contractor, you've really got to make sure that you verify, as it's known, verify the status of your subcontractors to see if they are registered under CIS, if they should be registered under CIS, and if they are, um, what what's the rate do you deduct? Or are they allowed to have gross payment status where you can genuinely pay them the full amount of their invoice without withholding any tax? So it's quite a, a, a bit of a, a paperwork exercise, bit of a ball ache, to be honest, uh, for a lot of people in the building game, but it's just... A fact of life, this is not something new, it's been around for 50 years and anyone involved in construction, building, even property developers need to um, consider their obligations under the CIS because like I said, if you get it wrong, the penalties can be onerous and they can come back on the contractor, not necessarily the subcontractor, even though subcontractor is the one who owes the tax. Now, of course, the contractor could be both a contractor and a subcontractor at the same time. In this example, to the end client here, they may require that this person is registered and have gross payment status so that they can pay um, the invoice in full because they themselves may need to be CIS registered. So it's quite complicated. Everyone in the chain needs to look at their respective tasks Who's billing who? Who's getting paid from who? Where is the CIS obligation? Where does it land? Who has to be registered under the CIS? Because if you get it wrong, it's a bit of a minefield. Now, continuing with the theme right from the start where basically HMRC's got it in for everyone in the construction game. Hence, the reason why this is in in the first place. They don't trust a lot of the thousands of people in the building game to get their taxes right. So what they've now done, they've said, look... <clears throat> We think what is quite rife in the building game is people billing plus VAT and doing a runner with the VAT. So to counteract that, there is now, just to add complication to the CIS, reverse charge mechanism for VAT. So what on earth is reverse charge mechanism? Well, before the reverse charge kicked in, which is only recently in the last few months, Assume this subby down here, £10,000 plus VAT to the contractor. Contractor would pay £12,000 to this guy. Assuming no deductions, just say it's, he's got gross status. But then, what was, what was uh, rife, according to HMRC, was a lot of these guys would disappear with the output VAT. So that £2,000 of output VAT on the subby's invoice to the contractor would not find its way to HMRC via a VAT return as output VAT. £10,000 plus VAT. This guy receives an invoice, 12000 total, pays the 12000 2000 of which should be going across to HMRC, but doesn't. So what have HMRC brought in to counteract that? Well, this is what we call this reverse charge VAT. So it works like this. Rather than the subcontractor sending an invoice to the contractor for 10 grand plus VAT, 10 grand plus 2 grand, instead the subcontractor just sends an invoice for a straight 10 grand. 10 grand invoice, no VAT. And then the contractor has to account for the VAT 
that the subcontractor would have paid under the old regime. In other words, it puts on its own VAT return, the contractor, £2,000 output VAT, and then it claims on the same VAT return, £2,000 input VAT. So from a cash point of view, nothing's changed for the contractor um, overall from a VAT perspective, because that twelve grand that they would have paid to the subby, two grand would have come back as input VAT later on. So actually, from a cash flow point of view, the um, the contractor is better off because rather than pay twelve grand, then recover two grand VAT up to three four months down the line, they just pay ten thousand pounds to the subby. The point being that the subby can't do a runner with a two thousand pounds of VAT because he's only getting ten thousand and not twelve thousand, and that two thousand. Has been reflected, reverse charged, as it were, in the contractor's VAT return. So the contractor pays ten thousand pounds out in cash, and that two grand of VAT is an in and out on his VAT return, nets off to zero, which gets back to what it would have been before. Other than, other than the fact that it would have been a time lag, twelve grand out the door, two grand back in under the input VAT several months later. So that is the new reverse charge mechanism. To complicate matters even more. So again, people in the under the CIS in the building game need to consider: Do they have to reverse charge this VAT? Who has to do it? Who is the subcontractor? Who is the contractor? Because the end client doesn't have to do this. Because end clients would suffer. Uh, tend to suffer the VAT, so it's all it's everyone before that down the chain um, who has to, you know, consider are they are they not only are they under the CIS, but does this reverse charge apply to them? Because obviously it's a big deal to go from adding VAT on your invoice from this guy to this guy, and all of a sudden not having to add VAT, but then you still need to let the contractor know so that he can reverse charge the VAT on his VAT return. So it's very, it's very complicated uh, at the best of times for the last 50 years, notwithstanding the fact now we've got this added complication of all the VAT um, reversals of, of what the reverse charge is it's known, um, where the recipient has to account for the output VAT that they would have otherwise uh, suffered in the past. So just an overview there on construction industry scheme been around for a long time uh, but it keeps being modified and this is one of the biggest changes to date on the whole VAT side of the, the CIS. Um, so yes, yeah, if, if you like this video please do subscribe right about there and I'll see you soon.